57 years, Mao Zedong held absolute power in China. This is the first full account of his life ever shown on television. Many of these images come from hitherto secret archives. They show the torment, the beatings and the killings of Mao's so-called cultural revolution, and the terrible famine which preceded it, leaving tens of millions dead. For the first time, Mao's inner circle speak out. His granddaughter, his doctor, valet, bodyguard, an English teacher. Together they provide the keys not only to China's past, but to an understanding of China today. Saturday, September the 18th, 1976, China stood still. Mao Zedong had died nine days earlier from a rare disorder of the nervous system called Lou Gehrig's disease. His power over the Chinese people, for good and for ill, was equaled only by the greatest of China's founding emperors. With single-minded ruthlessness, he wrenched his subjects out of the somnolence of a medieval empire and transformed them into citizens of a modern nation-state. We are defining our own reality and like a hall of mirrors we will end up defining ourselves. All ideas contrary to Mao's thinking and the objects that represented them had to be destroyed. Not just Confucianism and Buddhism, but even more so foreign faiths like Christianity. Throughout the country, churches were closed, clergy unfrocked, religious symbols smashed. The statue of the Virgin Mary was replaced by a portrait of Mao. It, 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 it has to become a better world, and of course it didn't. It became a much worse world. The physical destruction wrought by the Red Guard was unparalleled even in China's long history. Monasteries all over the country, as far away as distant Tibet, were ransacked and razed to the ground. When the communists took over China, they began killing Christians at the rate of 15,000 a month. Missionaries that were there reported, those that survived, that came, got out of China, said, you know, it was strange. When they came into our village, the communists came in, they didn't start teaching communism in the schools. The first thing they did in the schools was start teaching evolution. The communists know full well evolution is the foundation for communism. They sing, Baby Jesus is sleeping in the hay. To us, they look like children performing for their congregation. But to the Chinese authorities, they are criminals. Because this is an underground house church, so called because they meet without state approval. They let us in to take these pictures to show both faith and defiance. While this congregation bravely shared with us what happens when the authorities find the faithful. The police called us evil and arrested us for illegal assembly, she explains. Chinese-born American Sam Chow works in China for religious freedom and researched the dangers faced by underground church worshipers. I interviewed maybe 40, 50 people. Uh, every one of them were beaten and uh, jailed and uh, harassed. 
When Mao Zedong took power, he banned religion. Communism was the new faith. These days, the state allows churches, but worshipers must register with police. And yet, look at the faces. So many young people, even here. They've grown up in a society where the moral imperative is make money and get ahead. Uh, and that doesn't take you very far. People here are discovering perhaps a simple truth, that money alone isn't bringing happiness. So hundreds of millions of Chinese, their numbers growing every day, are seeking something more. So even traditional Eastern religions like Buddhism are flourishing again, but none like the underground Christians. In this village, they were even building their own church until, as this cell phone video shows, the authorities knocked it down. In China, it was once easy to know what to believe in, the Communist Party. Those days may be gone for good, as a new generation learns how to find and keep its own faith. Barry Peterson, CBS News, Beijing.